Hey. I'm good. Let's see if we can do this without making everyone seasick here. This is how a light setup works on a motorized bike. Any two stroke, one five scale, all of the above. <clears throat> you have a coil that generates a low voltage AC current. And the AC current goes to a small coil, the iron ferret coil um, core inside. It's a large coil. This is basically a flyback transformer. And it puts out a 15,000 kilovolt um, voltage, which is what you're going to get in your spark plug for the ones with the red wire coming out of them. And I think the other one's like 10,000. So, anyways, those are your spark plug. It actually is the small part in the center there, which is usually tungsten. It goes to the ground and the arc. Okay. Inside, this, the big coil is grounded to the small coil. The small coil is grounded to that black wire, but the black wire is actually grounded to the case. So that's how these all, this is screwed into the case. So makes a continuous loop. Now there's a common ground from here to your secondary coil. And the secondary coil is going to put out AC current as well. Now, what happens is, is there's a positive and a negative magnet. And when one goes around, it, these switch. When the positive one goes by here, they'll switch. So it makes alternating current. So, if you don't have the two, if you have the coils out of alignment where this one's putting out a positive charge and it's connected to this one that has a negative charge at the same points, it will actually kill your coil. Every time it's been, it'll not start. Um, if you have them where they're both <clears throat> putting out the negative voltage at the same time, positive voltage at the same time, negative, positive, your bike will run. <clears throat> what a lot of people do with this is they just run one wire up to a light. It has to be a cadescent light because LED is, uh, runs off a uh, positive and negative DC. And then the other one will go back to the ground. So you'll have a ground to your light. You'll have the, well it's not a ground, it's alternating current going to a 12 volt light. Because this puts out 12 volts. What happens is, is those lights, like, they'll have the case grounded. And people will just put one side on whatever. <laughs> so, it's kind of hard to explain, but you have to make sure this case is not grounded to the light fixture inside. Uh, you want it separated, and a lot of that Chinese crap isn't, so... You know, it's like right to the socket. Otherwise, when this, say this side, these are going to be alternating for 12 volt. Just ignore all this for now. This will be a positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. <laughs> when the common ground's touching, it's going to short out. If one side is touching to the frame at all times, and this becomes a positive. So that's how AC current, it'll short out the coils. And then resistance. So, it works kind of like a DC motor. When you have a DC motor and you cross the two terminals, and you try and spin it, it gets really hard. When you release it, it freeze flows. It's the same kind of principle. It creates like a resistance, kills the whole system. And you're actually, in some cases, shorten it. So, if you have it wired like this, where the two coils are matched, so that they're both alternating current in harmony, if you have them flipped, where this one's here and that one's, it's going to kill itself every time. It's going to create resistance. So to do DC, this is how you do DC current. You put a diode in each side. One off the common ground. <coughs> you, you know, grounded area. And then you put one off the live on the coil there. And after that coil you want to put a resistor now i'm doing a 12 volt battery here just for example 
So I put a 500 ohm resistor in basically. And actually, I think it's like 250. I think 500 is for 6 volts, so don't hold me to that. But you put a resistor in line, and that way it puts a lower voltage in to feed your battery. If you blow 12, 12 volts into it, you're going to blow that battery up. It has to be a lead acid sealed battery. And um, from there, you can power your light. So this would be like an LED light. And they're not going to be grounded. They're all one way. So, it's not like you're going <laughs> to have to worry about that. It just won't turn on. Um, if you, like, flick the switch on and it goes poof, yeah, I mean, <laughs> then it's backwards. Like, your positive will be on the ground inside, so, whatever. But, I mean, this is, like, the basic setup of how everything works. So I hope that helps some people, but this is why you're always having your problems. These two coils are not wired in sync. So it creates, you know, a positive and a negative fighting each other right here, and then they just short. Because this is all ground to the case. And it's not fair to call it a ground because it's always alternating current through the case and everything else until you put diodes in line, then it becomes DC. And this is how you would do a battery. Uh, the safest way to possibly do a battery is to put your two diodes in. So that way you have a positive and a negative. And to just get a battery charging <coughs> unit, it'll keep track of the battery voltage when it reaches 13.4 volts. Uh, it'll cut it off for these little units. I know it's usually 14 something for a car, so don't get that confused, but they're usually about 13.4 volts and they turn off. And they charge the little lead acid batteries that are like one amp hour that power LEDs and stuff. And you can get them in like a one inch by one inch configuration. So they do have them. Uh, let me think. But yeah, everything coming out of this, this actually gets dropped by this resistor, so it slowly feeds this battery. So, I mean, you could do that as long as the lights are continuous and stuff. There's a little bit of math in there, how many lights and all that stuff. So, you could technically lower it, and if there's more of a drain on the battery, that way it feeds it, you know, so forth. Um, the reason I say you have to have a battery is if you call too much, well, you could actually have a capacitor or a battery. I mean, it just depends. I mean, you could use, you know, some capacitors or something, make a brick, but you would put it like right after a good heavy resistor. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how that works. So, I hope that helps someone. Alright, peace out.